Hey everyone, this is Aria, and I hope you're doing well. I recently did a gloss simulation tutorial where I used geometry nodes to subdivide my mesh, and I got a few comments asking why I didn't just use a subdivision surface modifier instead of using geometry nodes. And of course, you can use the subdivision surface modifier before the gloss simulation, but it does limit you a little bit in your ability to go back and control the gloss simulation, so I'm just going to go through that. By the way, if you want to get the file that I used to create the thumbnail for this tutorial, then just head over to my Patreon page and sign up to become a member. Let's just delete the light and the camera for now. We can select our default cube and let's just bring this up by hitting G, Z, and 1. Then we'll hit Shift A, Mesh, and Add a Plane. Let's scale this up by hitting S and typing in 8. Next, we can head over to the physics properties and we're going to add a collision to both of these. We can add a plane for our cloth, so shift A, mesh plane, and then we'll just hit G, Z, and 5 to bring this up. Then hit S to scale and type in 5. Typically, when you're doing a cloth simulation, you might go into edit mode and add subdivisions before adding your cloth simulation, but the issue with this is you tend to run into a destructive workflow and it's harder to go back, especially if you're using a more complex shape. So another option is to head over to the modifiers properties and add a subdivision surface. If we set this to something like 4 and click simple, we've now subdivided our mesh. If I hit tab to go into edit mode, you'll still see there's only 4 vertices, but if we head over to the physics properties and add a cloth, you'll see that we do actually have some subdivisions. For a very basic simulation, this may work, but for example, if we wanted to add a pinning group to our cloth, you'll see that we still only have four vertex points. I'm just going to quickly show you, you don't have to do this, but if I add a pinning group and head into edit mode, I can assign this vertex point to the group, head into the cloth simulation, and select that as our pinning group. When I hit play, you'll see that it kind of pins a big chunk of our cloth, so it's not really doing what we want. So we would have to come back to our modifier tab and apply this to our mesh so that when we hit tab, we actually have more vertices to play with. But again, you end up running into this problem of a destructive workflow. For now, I'm just going to get rid of everything and start from scratch, then show you why I think it's better to subdivide within geometry nodes. Let's just head down to the left here, and when you see a plus sign, we can just click and drag to add a new window. Click here and let's select geometry nodes. Then I'm going to hit new. And if you watched my last tutorial, you'll remember that we added a subdivide mesh, but I didn't really explain too much why this is a better approach. So I just want to show you. We can head over to the physics properties now and add our class simulation. You can leave this to default, but I'm just going to raise the quality up a little bit. Then we can scroll all the way down. Let's also add self collisions. And again, you can leave your quality down, but I'm just going to set mine to 8. Now, if we hit play, you'll see that we've got pretty much the same effect that we did with our subdivision surface modifier. So I just want to show you why this is a better approach than using the subdivision surface modifier. If I hit tab, you'll see that we still only have 4 vertex points. But what we can do is we can actually add in a different object and use the location of that object to pin our cloth. So in the 3D viewport, hit shift A and I'm just going to add a basic cube. You can use whatever shape you want, but I'm just going to keep this simple. Let's just bring this up and I just want to bring this right over to the corner here. Then I'm just going to scale this down a little bit and then just bring this down just till it's right under our cloth. Now if I click back on our geometry node setup, Click and drag this cube into our geometry node setup. We can now use this to pin our cloth. And it's surprisingly easy. The first thing that we want to do is set this to relative just so that we're using the relative position instead of the original position, which is somewhere in the center. Next, we can hit Shift A and we can type in prox and select our geometry proximity node. Then we're just going to drop that right here, select our geometry and hook it up to our target. The next thing we need to do is take this information and send it out so that we can use it in different parts of Blender. If I just come over to the right, you'll notice that we have our output attributes. 
Currently, there's nothing connected, but if we take our distance node and connect it to our group output, you'll see that it adds a distance attribute. And now we can use this attribute to connect to different parts of Blender. I'm just going to quickly rename this just so that we know what we're using it for. And you'll see when I change it here, it changes up here as well. What we need to do is utilize this as our pinning group. So just head over to the object data properties. And just like you would add a vertex group, you can click plus here. I'm just going to rename this to pin, but you can name it whatever you want. Then if we head back to the modifier properties, click this window, you'll see we have the option to select our pin. So what's happening here is we're taking the relative position of our object and then we're taking the distance of that and sending it out to our pin group. Then we're going to take our pinning group and connect it to our pin. If I head back into the class simulation properties, we can scroll all the way down, make sure to open up the shape properties and we can select pin. Then make sure you're on frame one and if I hit play, you'll see that our cloth is falling near our object and nowhere else. So what we'd want to do is flip that around. There's a couple ways to do this. You could use a map range node. In this case, I'm going to use the color ramp node just because it's the simplest way to do it. Then all we need to do is flip both of these. Now if I hit play, you'll see we've got our pinning group working correctly. You'll notice that it's going out a little bit far, so we can just grab our handle here and drag this over. You'll see that things are working a lot better. And the best part about this method is now we can actually go back and forth between our subdivision levels in a non-destructive way. You'll see this is kind of not working properly, so what you can do with that if you've got lower subdivisions is you can just bring this back up a little bit. And you'll see that that's working a lot better. This is very few subdivisions for a cloth, so you're likely not going to be using that few. But this does give you the option to work a lot quicker with cloth simulations when you're testing out everything. We can actually make this dynamic, so I'm just going to select the cube. And make sure I'm on frame 1, then I'm going to hit I to set a keyframe and click location. I'm just going to go over to frame 40 and don't worry about our cloth for now. I'm just going to bring our cube somewhere over here, I, and add another location keyframe. Then if I head back to frame 1, I'm just going to bring this down a little bit just so that our fall off is a little sharper. You'll see now that we have a dynamic pinning group. And again, I know this is a basic example, but you'll see the power and flexibility that you get by using geometry nodes. If you like this tutorial, please make sure to like and subscribe. If you want to get the file that I used in the thumbnail picture with all the textures and lighting, you can head over to my Patreon page and sign up to become a member. You'll get the file that I used to create the thumbnail as well as a bunch of other files from my past tutorials. Okay, I hope to see you soon. Bye!